Jesus starts here a Sermon on the Mount. And this is probably the most famous sermon that Jesus preached. And in here, over the years, it's been kind of turned around into this idea that Jesus used this as sort of a Magna Carta, or what we are supposed to do as a church. What's interesting is when Jesus starts teaching this, we go through this series, is Jesus actually starts teaching some pretty heavy things. And sometimes it's very difficult things. We're going to talk about the idea of Jesus talks about lust, right? And he goes, it's not what you do, it's actually what's in your heart. It's like, oh man. Right? Jesus starts stepping on toes during the series of the Sermon on the Mount. And I think really the whole premise of Jesus teaching and preaching here really brings this around to the idea that, look, we need Christ. We can't do this on our own. Right? The series on the Sermon on the Mount isn't an idea that here's our rules and regulations for us to live by and achieve by. Because we can't. And so what happens is that brings us to Christ. Brings us to Christ. Because through him we're accepted in the beloved. It's through Christ and his righteousness that I'm welcomed. It's not that I'm good enough. And so the Sermon on the Mount, and as we get into the Beatitudes, really has this idea to it that we are not good enough. And yet Jesus still says, come. You know what? And that's a message I like. Because you know what? I'm not good enough. I falter and I stumble. I doubt and I have fears. I come to these moments in my life where I cast myself onto the mercy of the Lord and he loves us and wraps his arms around us. He says, that's okay. I paid for that. We don't need another religion full of do's and don'ts. See, here's the, here's the thing. If you want a religion that will teach you how to be a good person, you know what? You can take your pick. Right? Muslims. The, their, the Quran tells them how to live a good life. A Buddhist, their religion, the Hindus, all these faiths are out there. All of them will tell you how to live a good life. But only one tells you how to live an eternal life. And through Christ we're accepted. If you want to talk about religion, ask people, say, well, how does your religion take care of... the?" idea of sin and you know you got like Buddhists say, well there is no sin well look around you yeah there is I worked with a guy who was a, a, a Buddhist it was funny because I was in Bible school to become a preacher and here he was a Buddhist and we were working together and our boss pulled us aside he said okay you guys are working together but you guys can't talk politics or religion so we were like a traveling joke we had a preacher and a, and a Buddhist traveling in a, in a garbage truck and, and, but you know what happened every time we got into the, into the truck? We talked politics and religion. You know? And he was like, well, Buddhism you know, it teaches you that there is no right or wrong. I said, so if I showed up at your house and shot your wife, that's okay. He goes, well, it's always a work in progress. And I was like, yeah. I said, look at this world. There is clearly a right and a wrong. I believe within us that we have that, that fingerprints of God, if you will, this conscience that tells us. I think there's so many people today who believe and look what's going on in the world today and know that it's wrong. They just know it. But they're afraid to go against it. We don't need a religion full of do's and don'ts. And Jesus comes and says, Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Now we talk about the idea of blessedness, and sometimes we get kind of this misconstrued, and sometimes some churches are really promote this. Now the idea of blessedness means you'll have all the money, you'll have all the fame, you'll have all the wealth, you'll have all the health, all these things. If, if you just love God enough, then you'll have all these things added unto you. And I'll tell you, that is an attractive sales pitch. The problem is the Bible doesn't teach that. He teaches us we can have peace in our times of trouble. We have comfort when we sorrow. And all these things, we start talking about blessedness. The world has their own idea of what the word blessed means. Doesn't it? Right? Blessed are the rich. 
right? If you have enough money, you know, if you have enough money, you can go to space right now. Right? Think about that. I, I saw this funny, you know, the last couple months, you know, we've had two rich guys spending all their money to, to go up to space. Actually, if you listen to the uh, Bezos, he turned around and actually came down, lacked down. He was up in space for like just a few minutes. Came down, he goes, I want to thank everyone who used Amazon because you made this all possible. So that explains, you know, where my prime money's going, right? Because up here in Maine, we don't get anything in two days, right? I was like, you know, we get it within maybe the same year, <laughs> right? I mean, but, but that's where it's all going. So every time you see a little smiley on that box that you got, you can thank Bezos, you're just sending him up to space again, right? Um, but, right, all these, blessed are the rich. You know, with their fancy cars and fancy houses and how often they're exempt from all the things that we have to do. The Bible says, blessed are the famous, the celebrity status. I mean, we have such a, a, a celebrity status mindset today in this world that people are rushing out and, and you know, trying out and singing and, and all these things, uh, right? To be, have their time on TV for their 50 minutes of fame. Blessed are the famous. Blessed are the powerful. It's amazing how things happen when you turn around and send your representatives to Washington. And all of a sudden, they know better. Right? I think they should pass, and I don't mean to be political, but I'm going to put this out there. But I think there should be a rule that our politicians need to abide by the same rules they call us to. Right? They should have the same insurance. They should have the same policies. Right? Uh, this past week, there was a, a politician coming on, and she was talking about defunding the police, and I'm not even going to get into that. But she was talking about defunding the police, and someone says, yeah, but don't you have private security? She goes, yeah, but I'm important. And she goes, I need that, because I have a job to do. And I'm like, that sums it up a lot, doesn't it? Now, I'm sure your politicians in, in Pennsylvania and in Texas, you know, you know, here, we send them down to Augusta, and they want to make their own rules up. Blessed are the powerful. And the world says, blessed are the strong. You know, might makes right. Let me tell you something. When Jesus starts sharing, starts preaching, the attractiveness of his gospel wasn't that he doesn't ask us to change. It doesn't that he doesn't ask us to surrender. He, it's not all that. The power is he accepts us. You know, Jesus' gospel went something like this. And Jesus heard it. This is Mark chapter 2, verse 17. He said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but call sinners to repentance. Right? His church here, this isn't a monument to saints. This is a hospital for sinners. And I'm a chief of them all. I am broken and in need of a Savior. Jesus said, I have come to seek and to save what? The lost. Oh, dear Lord, I'm often lost. You know, sometimes I don't even know how to pray. We, we just spent some time in prayer this morning. And I, I, I don't know. But I trust in a Savior who is a good God. Right? I'm lost. You know, all this pandemic stuff, you know, I, I apologize if some of you thought I know what I'm doing. I don't. But it's forced me onto my knees. And Jesus puts it this way. As we get into these Beatitudes. See, this is the appeal of the gospel. Jesus attracted crowds of people because they heard a message they hadn't heard before. You didn't hear, blessed are, are the famous, blessed are the powerful, blessed are the rich. That's not the message Jesus Christ put out there. Jesus put out there, said, blessed are the lost, for they shall be found. Blessed are the underdogs. Yeah, everyone loves a good underdog. Right? I don't know about you, but I feel like the whole world's against me sometimes. 
Jesus said, blessed are you. Blessed are the broken. I remember talking to someone once, and I, I was trying to describe sin, and they're like, well, what? how do you describe sin? I said, look, we're broken. We're broken. You know, I cringe because in the world today, you know, you'll have a shooting or you have some crime, and what everyone wants to do, first of all, they rush in and say, okay, you know, what happened to make this person be that way? Right? You know what the problem is? It's sin. It's sin. It's not a matter of taking the guns, or it's not a matter of taking, removing the circumstances. It's the sin in our heart. We are broken. You can say, well, I'm not broken. I just don't know it. We can polish ourselves up, and we can put on and fancy up. The Bible says, blessed are the broken, and blessed are the weak. You know, we all try to be tough, and try to say, hey, I got this, I can handle this. The Bible says, in our weakness, what? He's made strong. Lord, when I come to the end of myself, See, one of our problems, can I be really honest with you this morning? I think some of our problem is that we try everything first, right? I try to handle it. I try to plan it. I try to scheme it. I try to make it all work together. We try everything all else. And finally, we exhaust ourselves. And then what do we do? Hey, God, okay, I need you, God. And God's like, what took you so long? You know, I think if we threw ourselves at Jesus' feet first... We'd be ahead of the game, wouldn't we? Blessed are the weak. Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to look at these Beatitudes, and we're just going to break them up and talk a little bit about them. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory, but I think it's encouraging for us to hear these words from Jesus himself. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. It says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up to a mountain. And when he had seen it, his disciples came to him, and he taught, opened his mouth and taught them. And this series goes on for several chapters here in Matthew. Chances are this was not just one sitting. Probably this was over a course of time that Matthew has just condensed for us in a few chapters. But Jesus says this, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now that's not terminology we use much today. What it means is, is someone who's, who's spiritually bankrupt, someone who's spiritually destitute, spiritually empty, spiritually poor. This is the person who says, I can't do this anymore. I've come to the end of myself. Lord, I need you. And the Bible says, you are blessed. Let me tell you that word blessed. Uh, we often associate that with just sort of happy are you, right? And we all want to be happy. Happy, happy, happy. But it's interesting because the, uh, one of the Hebrew words for blessed means you're on the right road. You're on the right road. You know, we just came back on vacation. I, I, I tell my wife, I said, no, I'm kind of tired. You know, it's almost time for vacation and and she's like, well, we just took a vacation a month and a half ago. It's like, oh, I got another few months before. Huh? Like, oh, I'm ready for a vacation already. Uh, you know, but traveling up. So we drove out to Minnesota, we turned around, come back. And on the way back, you know, we just, we just had a wonderful time at the end. Uh, we couldn't find a hotel because everything was booked. My daughter got sick, was throwing up in the back seat. Uh, it was just a wonderful time in the, in the vehicle. We were rushing in. And I'll tell you, it was so great when we come across, uh, came across 90, uh, the 490, uh, 290, the 495, then we hit 95, we hit 95, we're, I think 95, we're in New Hampshire, I think, at that point. And I'll tell you, we hit New Hampshire, no, it, it was so great, because like, we're on 95, now we're still several hours away, my daughter's still throwing up in the back seat, we're both tired, my wife and I were switching off every 20 minutes because both of us are like this, uh, but it was like, we had a joy in our heart because we're almost home, we're on 95. Oh, 
when you laugh. You know what it's like, right? We were happy and blessed because we knew where the road was going. And so anytime I look at the word blessed here, I think it's more than just a happiness. I, I love this idea that we're on the right road. We know what's at the end of it. And we have this contrast within the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Right? Blessed are you. You're on the right road. Well, what do you mean? Because if that poverty of the soul, if that hunger of the soul, that despair of your, your spirit turns around and turns you to God, happier are you because you're on the right road. For yours is the kingdom of heaven. You're on the right path. Now I'm going to date myself because every Thanksgiving my mom would make us watch The Wizard of Oz. Right? I, I, I remember being a little kid and I was terrified. That is like the biggest horror movie of all times. Because I do all right, you know. You, you know, the, the, you know follow, follow, you know, and follow the yellow brick road. And you got a little, you know, and you get the little road, and she's staying on. All she had to do was stay on the path, stay on the road, Dorothy, stay on the road. And all throughout the movie, she's off the road. And then the flying monkeys come in. I had nightmares over the flying monkeys. It's like people were like, "Oh, this is a great family film." It's like. Yeah. But just follow the road. Follow the road. Follow the road. Christian, for us, when we find Christ, he sets us on the path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He God leads us, guides us, and directs us. We just have to follow him, stay on the path. Blessed are you, because we know what's at the end. Heaven. And I don't know about you, but more and more every day I'm like, Lord, come quick. I'm sick of hearing about cancer. I'm here, sick of hearing about pandemics. I'm tired of hearing all the struggles. I'm here, I'm sorry, I'm here, tired of hearing broken homes. I'm tired of hearing of what they're teaching our kids. I'm so tired of this. Lord, come quickly. Blessed are you, because I'm poor in spirit. And I need you, Lord. Follow the road. Matthew chapter 5, blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. How many tears have you shed at night? Maybe it's through loss and suffering. Maybe as we see the condition of this world and the condition of his church. Folks, my heart has wept. And Jesus hears our tears. Actually, the Bible tells us that God takes our tears and collects them in a bottle. That someday, the Bible says, every tear will be wiped from our eyes. There'll be no more tears, no more sorrow. I look forward to that day. Do we mourn for the brokenness, for our lack of strength, for our weakness? Where we have nothing else to do. Remember we talked about, you know, I tried everything else and now I'm going to try God. Right? God says, try me first. Because in our weakness, he's made strong. We are broken. And we weep for that. Because I don't have the strength to go on. Used to be a commercial for Kelgon, bubble bath. I think it was a bubble bath, bath salt, right? I just remember the tagline was Kelgon, take me away. Oh, I've, I, I've said that prayer. Lord, stop the world. I, I want to get off, right? Lord, I, I don't want to be on this ride anymore. Have you ever, ever cried that out? Blessed are you. 
Blessed are you in your weakness because you'll find comfort. Jesus offered comfort to our soul. In the book of John, Jesus comes and approaches the funeral of his friend Lazarus. Mary and Martha, his sister, are weeping. and Jesus goes down to the tomb. And he looks around and he sees how heavy-hearted they are of the loss of their brother. And the Bible has the shortest verse in the Bible. It says, Jesus, what? Wept. And those around him said, oh, look how he loved him. Jesus weeps. Because we weep. The Bible says we don't have a high priest who cannot understand or cannot be touched by our emotions. That in this, he, he knows us and sees us and he weeps. And someday, folks, Jesus will wipe away our tears. Blessed are you when you find that road and stay on it till the end. Blessed are you. Matthew chapter 5, it says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Meekness. We don't, we don't talk about meekness much today, do we? We talk about, you know, the world's ideas. Blessed are the strong. Blessed are the mighty. Blessed are the powerful. Because they can have their way. They can do what they want. Jesus says, no, blessed are you if you're meek. And meekness is power under control. Strength restrained. My translation is, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. You ever been frustrated? You know, we used to live down by Waterville. And, uh, and I don't know. I, I, has anyone here been in Waterville? Oh, you guys lived down there. I would come home so frustrated from driving through there because, now I apologize for people in Waterville. Don't listen. We're on Facebook. But people in Waterville can't drive. And I would come home and just so frustrated. And I would come home and, and tell my wife, I said, ah. and she goes, what's wrong? She goes, someone left the gate open on the idiot farm today. Now, I don't suggest that. That's really not a good Christian thing to say. But, ah! Oh! You know, I wanted to honk and I wanted to yell. I wanted to scream. You ever been that way? And you say, well, maybe it's not traffic. Pastor, you're just pretty shallow. And I admit, I am pretty shallow. But let me tell you something. So many times over this past year, I've wanted to take someone and wring their little necks. Once again, not condoning, not saying you should. But Bible says, blessed are you when you don't. When you can force your way, but don't. We have a lot of people today who will push and shove to get ahead, who will step on those who are weaker. The Bible says, blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who restrain themselves, those who lift up those who are unable to do it themselves. Blessed are you. Because you shall inherit the earth. The Bible says that those who are saved will return and will rule and reign with him. We realize, you know what, this world is not my home. Right? That someday, something better is going to come. And someday, because of my service for the Lord, and because of these things, because I humbled myself, He will exalt me in due time. That I'll hear from Him, my, well done, my good and faithful servant. Blessed are you. When I pour myself out to the Lord and say, Lord, this is what I want to do. The Lord can hold me back. Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. 
hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now we have a lot of talk about today about social justice. That's not the justice he's talking about here. Can I, I, I hate to shatter your, re, your idea of reality, but this world is messed up. You look shocked. It seems so much that the wrong is getting ahead. Doesn't it? That it seems like things are unfair. The person who tries to play by the rules, the person who tries to do the right thing, seems to get further and further behind. Those who lie, cheat, and steal seem to get ahead of the line. Are you tired of it? All our politicians that don't have to follow the rules that we do. It's not right. The Bible says, Blessed are you, hunger and thirst for righteousness' sake. For the right thing. I always kind of say, you know, God is righteous. The idea of righteousness is the rightness. God does the right thing. God will always do what is right. This world is wrong. And someday, they will give an account. In the book of Revelation, we're going through Revelation Sunday nights. 5.30, make a plug for that. Bible study in the book of Revelation. There's a passage in there that talks about the saints around the throne of God. And their cry, their prayer is, Lord, how long until will you avenge us? How long until you set things right? And Jesus says, just a little more time. There is a time when God is going to judge, when those will have to give an account. That day will come. I'm impatient. Right? I scream at the TV. I, the news is not good for my blood pressure. Right? I, I get angry because things aren't right. And what that does is cause me to throw myself down and say, Jesus, come quick. Because I can't do anything. And God's timetable is sure. His word says that he will judge. He will set things right. Those will have to give an account. And what a fearful day it will be for those who, as they stand before their maker, will have to give an account for their life for what they did and what they are doing. But blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because that day will come. There is a day in which I will stand before my Lord. There's a day where I want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I'm into your rest. And he'll open heaven's doors and I'll be home. And there'll be no more tears and no more sorrow. Well, things will be right. The Bible says you shall find that, but only in Christ. The Bible says, Blessed are the merciful, so they shall obtain mercy. Mercy is not giving what is deserved. When someone has wronged you and you turn the other cheek, that's mercy. When the person deserves a tongue lashing and you don't, that is mercy. Lord, help me be merciful. Because Matthew here says, Blessed are the merciful for what they shall obtain. What? Mercy. See, mercy is one of those interesting things because I like mercy when it's applied to me. I love it when people forgive me. I love it when people overlook my faults. I love it when people don't point out my errors. I, I like it when people love me beside, but because, not because I don't deserve it. I love mercy. But when, when I dish out mercy, it's a whole different thing. I don't want to be merciful. Why? Because they deserved it. Well, guess what? You know what I deserve? Blessed are the merciful. When I turn things over and surrender things over to God, when I, when I don't seek out my own vengeance, the Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. When I turn it over to Him, 
Or it's not up to me to settle the score. The Bible says, blessed are you. You're on the right path. Because you'll get mercy as well. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are those who haven't polluted themselves with the things of this world. You know, we live in a day and age where everything's bombarded. We're told if it feels good, do it. If it makes you happy, do it. We have this pollution in this world, this junk that's poured in us day in and day out. We can sit all day long on the computer and pop up and look at whatever we want, listen to whatever we want, and no one needs to know. The Bible says, blessed are you if you don't pollute your heart. Guard your heart, the Bible says. Guard your heart. For out of it, issues the issues of life. You know, people will make fun of you. Oh, you don't watch this show, or you don't listen to music, or you don't do this, or you don't go here, or you don't do that. And they'll, they'll make fun of you. The Bible says, blessed are you, you shall see God. There's a greater reward out there. There's things that satisfy more than the things of this world if we will turn to him. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are you who pursue peace. As much as it depends on you, live peacefully with all men, the Apostle Paul said. Are you willing to bury the hatchet and then forget where you buried it? Are we willing to back down first for the sake of peace? For you should be called the sons of God. It's interesting that Jesus then brings out this idea of those who follow him, the cost that goes along with it. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they rile, revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice to be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecute the prophets who were before you. Blessed are you when you suffer for Jesus' sake. Because look what he did for you. Can I tell you something, folks? Jesus is worth it. Take this whole world and give me Jesus. The old hymn, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and all the things of this world will grow strangely dim. Jesus is worth it, folks. He's the pearl of great price. For we sell everything we have and pursue him. Blessed are you when you take a stand for Jesus. And you may be persecuted. Don't be surprised. They persecuted him too. But he is worth it. Isn't he? Blessed are you. And folks, we are getting in a day and age where it's going to be harder to take a stand. I don't think the lines will be blurry at all. It's going to be clear cut of where we stand. Will we stand for the Lord or not? Will we stand upon his word or we won't? Or will we stand for truth or we won't? But blessed are you if you stand with Jesus. See, each one of these things acknowledges our need and our shortcoming and our faltering and putting ourselves last. Blessed are you. You're on the right path. You're on the right road because Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is at the finish line as well as walks beside us each step of the way. See, Jesus starts off the Sermon on the Mount as blessed are you who struggle. Because Jesus is your strength. Blessed are you if you're not good enough because Jesus is good enough. Blessed are you if you can't because my God can. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, when we look at these Beatitudes, Lord, it's not strength that you want, it's not ability, it's not skill. It's a surrendered heart. Lord, in our need, you satisfy. 
Lord, satisfy us. Lord, help us to find the road. And Lord, help us to stay on it, to follow you wherever you go. Because in it, Lord, it is the road of joy. And we ask this in your name. Amen.